Good morning again. So we continue with our tutorials. Now we're going to do tutorial 11, topic 11, game theory inside Oligopoly. So we have this question. In a two-player one-shot simultaneous move game, each player can choose strategy A or strategy B. So if both players choose strategy A, each earn a payoff of 400. If both players choose strategy B, then each earns a payoff of 200. If player 1 chooses strategy A and player 2 chooses strategy B, then player 1 will get 100 and player 2 will get 600. If player 1 chooses strategy B and player 2 chooses strategy A, then player A in 600, or sorry, player 1 in 600 and player 2 in 100. So the question, what is the, the game, or write this game in a normal form? Find each player dominant strategy, find the Nash equilibrium, and we rank strategy pairs by aggregate payoff from the highest to the lowest. Can the outcome with the highest aggregate payoff be sustained in equilibrium? Why and why not? So as we say, since uh, in the description we say if both uh, players play A, they will get 400-400. If both they play B, they will get 200-200. If player 1 play A, and player B or player 2 play A, uh, B, sorry, the player 1 will get 100, player 2 will get 600. If player 1 uh, play B and uh, player 2 play A, so player 1 will get 600 and player 2 will get 100. Now, what is the dominant strategy for a, uh, player 1 and player 2. So the domain strategy for player 1 is B and also for player 2 is B. Why? Let's see here. When player 1 play B, he get either 600 or 200. So he guarantee this 200 whatever player 2 is going to play B or A. So, if he play, player 2 play B, he will get 200. If player 2 play uh, A, then he will get 600. So, this 200 is guaranteed. And for player 2, it's the same. He will guarantee these 200 when he play B, whatever player 1 play A or B. If player 1 play A, he will get 600. If player 1 get B, play B, he will get 200. So, both of them have dominant strategy of B, and therefore, the Nash equilibrium happens as B and B. So now, what is the joint payoff form? So, we can see joint payoff AA is 400 plus 400, equal to 200. That is greater than if joint off from uh, A and B, if let's say this, a, B, 100, 600, or B, A, 100, 600, that means 700, 700. So 800 is greater than 700. And this is, is greater than if they play B, B, which is, they will get 200, 200, which is 400. So A, A is greater than A, B, and B, A, and also greater than B, B. So now, number E, can the outcome with the highest, um, aggregate payoff be sustained in equilibrium. What is the highest is this. It can be sustained, no. Why? Because each frame domain strategy is B. Therefore, since this is the one-shot game, each player would have an incentive to cheat on any collusive agreement. Let's say, uh, they, uh, they, uh, if they come to an agreement, and uh, to charge maybe, for example, plus a high, higher prices and, and give them more than, um, let's say, this 400 and 400, which is greater than the equilibrium, right? Nash equilibrium. So, this has an, uh, player two has an intensive if they call you to cheat, because why? If he cheat and play B, he will get 600, and play 1, he will get only 100. 
At the same, player one has an incentive to cheat because if he cheat and play A, he will get 600 and player two, he will get only 100. So since uh, both uh, has repeat. Can the outcome with the highest aggregate payoff be sustained in equilibrium? Highest payoff is this AA. Okay? So 800. Can be sustained? No. Why? Because each firm domain strategy is B. Therefore, since this is the one shot game, each player would have an incentive to cheat on any collusive agreement. Let's see, see why. Let's say if they come to an agreement to play an AA and stick to BB to get 200, 200, they will play AA to get 400, 400. So player two, he has an incentive to cheat and play B instead of A and he will get 600, therefore player one will get only 100. And the same player one, he has an incentive to cheat and play B instead of A then he can get 600 and play 2, he get only 100. So since this is only one uh, short game, so each player will not uh, believe the other that uh, he will uh, fulfill his promise and, and produce at A level. Therefore, each one has no incentive to uh, play at A, but both they will play at B. So second question, Use the following payoff matrix for a simultaneous move, one shot game to answer the questions. Why is player one optimal strategy and why? So, to determine player one equilibrium payoff. So, player one optimal strategy is obviously A. Why? Because if you are player one and you put yourself in player two, situation which one you are going to to play if you play c you can get 14 or 5 if you play d you can get 11 or 1 if you play e you can get 20 or 25 if you play f you will get 90 or 17 it is clear that domain strategy for player 2 is e so whatever player 1 play a or b so player Two, he will get the highest pay of either 20 or 25. Therefore, player one, he should know that domain strategy for player two is uh, E. Therefore, player one will play A, where he can get 80. Because if he play B, he get only 7. Then, uh, determine player one equilibrium pay off. Obviously, as I said, since domain strategy for E is, uh, for player two is E, therefore player one will play A and he can get 80, then this is will be the Nash equilibrium. Then third question, use the following normal form game to answer the following question. So we have player one, player two. Player 1 has A and B strategies, player 2 has C and D strategies. If they play A and C, they will get 30-30. If they play B and D, they will get 60-60. If they play A and D, they will play 1 will get 70 and player 2 will get 0. If they play B and C, player 1 will get 0 and player 2 will get 70. So identify the one shot Nash equilibrium. So why is the Nash equilibrium here? It is clear it is A and C. Because why? If let's say they collude and they play B and D to get 60-60. So each player has an incentive to cheat since if player 2 cheat and play instead to play C, he play D. Uh, sorry, uh, instead to play um, uh, D. The collusive one he plays he plays C. Then 
since player one keep his promise and play at B, then player one will get zero, player two will get 70. Same, because it is only one, one shot game. Same for player one. If player one has an incentive to cheat, then instead to play uh, B, right, of the collusion, he will play A. Since player one play A, but D keep his promise playing D, then the, equi the, the equivalent come here. So play A will get 70, play D will get zero. So since both players know that there is an incentive for the other of the driver to cheat, therefore both of them, they will play C and C. They will not come to a collusion. And will come to T30. Yes, so A and C. Then suppose the player uh, know this game will be repeated exactly three times. Can they achieve payoff that are better than one shot uh, Nash equilibrium? No. Why? This is a finitely played game with three rounds only. So players know that round three is the last round. So they will treat that as a one shot game, the third one. Therefore, they both cheat. So they play C and C instead of D and D. Again, because they know they will both cheat in round three and that they can't punish them for it's the future round, also they cheat in round two. This continues and they cheat in every round, including the first round. Therefore, the Nash equilibrium 30-30 is the highest payoff they can get because every player has an incentive to cheat and therefore every player, player one will play C and play, uh, sorry, play A and player two will play C and they will get 30-30. They will not come to that collusion. Now suppose this game is infinitely repeated and the interest rate is 6%. Can the players achieve payoffs that are better than one shot Nash equilibrium? So we have the formula of the trigger strategies, and uh, this formula will show us if the two players are going to keep in their uh, collusion or they have an incentive to cheat. So the formula is the highest payoff can be achieved if. Pi cheat minus pi cope divided by chi cope, uh, pi cope divided, uh, minus pi Nash equilibrium is less or equal to 1 divided by interest rate. So here we have pi cheat is 70, pi cope is 60, and pi Nash equilibrium is 30 from the table. So pi cheat, pi cope rate, and pi Nash equilibrium. So after calculation, we will find that 70 minus 60 by 60 minus 30 equal to 1 divided by 3 equal to 0 0.33, which is less than 1 divided by i, which equal to 16.67. So therefore, each firm can indeed earn a payoff of 60 every round via trigger strategies. It means that each firm will have no incentive to cheat, but to keep the corporate, uh, corporate, uh, uh, to, uh, collusion uh, strategies, which they give a payoff of 60. Then, the last, suppose that the players do not know exactly how many times this game will be repeated, but they do know that the probability of the game will end after a given play of theta. If theta is sufficiently low, can players end more than they could in a one shot Nash equilibrium? So the, the here you will say yes, because if theta is very sufficiently, sufficiently low, then means that each player better uh, for, for, for the, uh, each player to collude and have uh, a payoff of 60 rather than have an incentive to cheat because since they don't know 
uh, where the game is uh, going to, uh, to finish and the probability is very low. Therefore, this resembles the infinitely repeated games. Since theta is very small, that means 1 minus theta is huge and the probability of playing the game many times is very high. That means goes to almost infin infin uh, infinity. And in this case, both of the players, they prefer to keep their collusion or to collude or cooperation and they get 60-60. Now, number four, we have used the following uh, normal form game to answer the following question. So we have play one and play two, play one, either you play A or B, play two, play C or D. So for what values of X strategy D strictly dominant for player two? So this player two, this strategy D. So in order for player two to have strategy D as a dominant, then he has to guarantee the payoff of three. So in that case, here, seven minus X should be less than three and should be at least two. Therefore, X must be more than four. So if X five, then we have seven minus five equal two. Yes, it will be this the dominant strategy. For what values of X is strategy B strictly dominant for player one? In order to play one have B as dominant strategy, he must have a payoff that is greater than this payoff, which is two. Here. So this one happened. This happened when x is less than five. If x is five, then seven minus five is two, similar. But if x less less than five, let's say four, seven minus four is three. Therefore, he can guarantee at least three. And this is whatever player two play, he guarantee three, then we become a domain strategy. Four, three, and here three and two. Then for what values of x is BD the only Nash equilibrium for the game? That's mean B and D. Player one, play B. Player two, play D. So you can see here, since player one, domain strategy, where x is less than five, and um, player two, domain strategy, where x is more than four. Therefore, here, we will have when x is less than five, let's say four, we will have here uh, three, seven minus four, that's mean three, three. And here we will have four, four, two, three. And here we will have three, five. So here we will have the Nash L equilibrium. Either three, five, or if let's say x3 become 4, 5, if x2 become 5, 5, if x1 become 6, 5, and if x0 become 7, 5. So at each number, you can see player 1 is the highest guarantee the payoff and also player 2 will guarantee 5 as or 3 as the guarantee uh, payoff whatever when x is less than 5 either 4 3 2 and 1 or 0 now we have Another question, use the following extensive for game to answer the following question. List the feasible strategy for player 1 and player 2. Identify the Nash equilibrium to this game and find the sub-game perfect equilibrium. So we have this. What are the first question is the feasible strategy for player 1 and 2? So for feasible strategy for player 1, well it has two. Either B, A, 
play A or B. But for player 2 has 4. If it has W, if 1 play A, or and it has Y, if uh, 1 play B. Also, it has X, if 1 play A, and it has Y, if 1 play B. Then it has W, if 1 play A, and Z, if 1 play B. And the last he has X, if 1 play A, and Z, if 1 play B. And define the Nash equilibrium for this game. So from the graph we can see that there are three Nash equilibrium. The first player one plays A and player two play W if A and Y if B. The second play one play B and player two play W if A and Z if B. And the third play one plays B and player 2 play X if A and Z if B. So from the first equilibrium there is a payoff of 60, 120. And the second and the third, both of them, they will get 100 and 150 as Nash equilibrium. So number C, find the subgame perfect equilibrium. So the sub game perfect equilibrium is player 1 play B and player 2 play W if A and Z if B. Player 1 play B and player 2 play W if A and Z if B. So since player 1 play B, then the sub game equilibrium will be 100. 150. So player 1 will get 100 and player 2 will get 150. I hope you understand the solution for those questions. I will see you in the next topic where we have some also uh, tutorial questions need to be solved. Thank you very much.